So for those of you who don't know me, uh, it's easiest to say who I am by saying I'm the Spires Database Manager. So let me uh, quickly, for those of you who don't know what that means, um, say something about uh, what the Spires database is. Uh, the, the only really important thing on this slide is that, uh, that we're a project of DAISY, Fermilab, and Slack libraries, and that what we do is made possible not only by those libraries, but also by people like Archive, people like all of the publishers of high-energy physics, and uh, a lot of other resources. So if you really want to know what Spires is, this is a survey of over 2,000 physicists just uh, this May. And uh, Spires, together with Archive, is Pac-Man. And uh, what, what we're eating there is, uh, is Google, which is always exciting for libraries to be eating Google rather than the other way around. <laughs> and notice what this question is. This is a question asked to physicists, what information system in HEP do you use the most? And uh, what you just barely see there are, uh, and I wish I had a pointer at some point, but uh, what you just barely see there are library services. Um, of course, Spires is a library service, and Archive is at the Cornell Library, so these are library services. Uh, and what you also just barely see there are commercial systems. So you recognize that what high energy physicists really use are community services, things based in the high energy physics community. Why is this? Well, because we're tailored directly to the needs of HEP. So this is really the same slide. Uh, the main difference is that this is just a question of which system do you use the most to find articles for which you know the reference? So in other words, I know what I'm looking for. Where do I go to find it? Well, okay, so publisher websites now all of a sudden start to appear. But what this means is if I have a, a reference in front of me, I, I know where it's published. Where do I go to find it? I still go to Spires. I'm just used to doing that. That's how the high energy physics community works. This may not be how the chemistry community works. No one's claiming that. But this is a reason why the high energy physics community is ripe for this sort of movement. We're used to doing things uh, using community-based systems. OK, so we're talking about open access. This slide, uh, when I gave uh, Salvatore and, uh, and Anne uh, some ability to do some studies out of Spires, I didn't realize they were going to steal all my, uh, all my good slides from this talk. But, uh, but this is basically the same thing Salvatore has already shown, is the history of, HEP, uh, of, of the HEP archive. Uh, and again, you see the stability over the most recent years. And the main point is that if you take, for example, FizRevD, just because I happen to take it as an example, about 95% of the papers published in FizRevD over the last, say, 10 years are submitted to archive. But notice that the converse is also true, that it's not just that people who publish submit to archive, it's that people who submit to archive also publish. So 75% of HEPTH papers have been published somewhere. So if you think about this in terms of the green and gold roads, we're essentially 100% green open access, right? And uh, we have these repositories. The repository community loves to talk about how they want to become the, the access points to research. We already have that situation in HEP. There is a disciplinary repository. In fact, there are two, Spires plus Archive. And uh, my colleague Simeon in the back there is from Archive. We're, we are the place where people go to do research in HEP. And that research that they look at is already open access, all of it, essentially. So this leads to a couple of questions. How does having 100% green open access affect journals? And then, of course, my question, because I'm not quite so in involved in open access, what I'm really more interested in is, how do we build a better repository? So this is, uh, this is why we said something like uh, synergies with open access is the, the, the topic I was given. So currently, what are the synergies with open access and repositories? Well, as I say, Spires isn't really related to Scope 3. We, we, we've existed for 40 years without it. Uh, but we can help understand why HEP is ripe for something like Scope 3. And again, not to bore you with too many, uh, many Pac-Man plots, but, uh, but here, this is a, a more direct question of, when you have a given subject and you're a physicist, where do you go to do your research? Well, and again, the answer is pretty clear. You go to community services. So. You don't go to your local library. You don't go to your journal website. You go to free global community resources. But this doesn't mean journals and libraries didn't have a role in this. Journals make this possible by being open access friendly, promoting green open access, and by helping make our repositories accurate. We work with all of the publishers to make sure our data is correct. And HEP libraries make this possible because the people who run these repositories are indeed the libraries themselves. So, Another point, uh, so this is essentially those Pac-Man plots are the words of particle physicists. 
but there's also their actions. Their actions speak louder than words. When you look at what particle physicists actually cite when they're citing, uh, citing papers and when they cite the papers, this plot just shows how long it takes after a paper appears on archive for citations to start appearing. And you can see that the citations start appearing immediately after the archive appearance. Now the median time of appearing on the journal is about five or six months later. So you notice that when it appears on the journal, if scientists were actually communicating using journals, they would wait until they read the article in the journal before they cited it. But they clearly don't. So scientists clearly don't communicate in this field using journals. It's just that's not a function of journals in this field. And this goes back to what uh, the, the stats that Salvatore presented. In this field, a library should cancel the journals because they look at it and they say, well, these aren't read. They're not used as communication. We're paying for this communication, but the physicists aren't using it. But the physicists are using the journals. They're using them all the time. If you look at uh, the actual publication rates of papers in the archive, in HEPTH, for example, they're something like 75%. And in fact, the more times a paper has been cited, the more likely it is to be published. So clearly, physicists want journals. They need journals. We can speculate about uh, career advancement, about uh, wanting to, to see their name in a pretty format, all sorts of reasons why they like journals, but they clearly like journals. So what scope three is trying to do is trying to understand how to resolve that, that conflict, that mismatch. So libraries right now pay for access to, to portals and papers as if their users are going to need these things. But they really don't. Instead, what they need is peer review services. And journals provide these services. So what Scope 3 is doing is say, let's pay for what HEP actually uses. OK, and this is the final uh, third of my talk. So you can see we may actually make lunch without uh, losing uh, our appetizers. So how can we make a better repository? How can Scope 3 help us do that? Well, one of the pillars of Scope 3 is making, well, let me just say this. So I, I run Spires. I'm not really a librarian. I'm not an MBA. I don't know if this stuff makes sense financially. I don't know if, if you folks can make it work. But if you can, here's how it can make uh, my life better. So at Spires, you know, we have, uh, we have something we've been running over the last 40 years, but uh, that doesn't mean we, we want to stay that way. We want to build something new. We want to build, uh, build new stuff to stay ahead of our users, to stay proactive. And in fact, I think uh, Jens already alluded to this, that we're working on a new project with, uh, with CERN, with DAISY, with Fermilab, with, with Slack, uh, to build kind of a next generation Spires service. And in this service, we would love to be able to enable new services like data mining and textual analysis. You know, a lot of time is spent in services like Spires just analyzing things for, say, duplication of articles. Well, uh, for instance, if you have the full text, this sort of thing is rather easy to do. But uh, the full text is often hidden behind these, uh, these license agreements, behind uh, the, the, the fact that it's, it's, it's a, used as a, something that's controlled rather than something that's free. So a repository that could actually have access to full open access publications would be a lot more powerful. And that's what we'd love to build. So the future, of, uh, the future of HEP is not just journals. It's not just spires. It's not just archive. It's really open availability of information. And the HEP community really believes in these community portals. That's what they use. Journals provide these sorts of services, like peer review and archiving. And Scope 3, what, I, what is really important about Scope 3 is it makes these explicit and protects them from some sort of cut that might happen otherwise. These are the services that we need to protect. And if you look at the HEP, the behavior of HEP physicists, these are the services they use. Archive, provi archive provides things like intake of papers and this immediate sort of lightly filtered communication that physicists have already shown they actually use. This is the communication style that high energy physicists prefer. And things like Spires or Inspire provides a sort of synthesis of all of this and a place where the end users actually come. So this landscape, which is driven not just by libraries, not just by researchers, but by everyone, by the publishers, by the libraries who build these portals, by, by these, all of the players in the field, is a really powerful landscape that I think, uh, from my view as, 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 as someone running one of these portals, this is the sort of place we need to go. 
And this is how we can meet the needs of our community. This is, it's, as again, it's very clear if you just look at what they do. High energy physicists want information from community, discipline-wide sources. They don't use journals as a communications medium, but they do value peer review. They value the other services that journals provide, and they need them. So this is how we can meet the needs of our community. And this is how we can go to lunch. <laughs>